Now on most scuba diving configurations, you've got your valve hand wheel coming on the right hand side and the whole lefty loosey, righty tighty, most divers can figure that out. But when you've got twin sets that have three hand wheels on it or side mount and they're coming out in different directions, how do you know which way to turn them? Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to the Scuba Diving Magazine channel and welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, where I, Mark, a former dive instructor, do my best to answer your scuba diving questions. So if you do have any diving questions, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Uh, use this Ask Mark hashtag at the beginning and the end. It doesn't really matter as long as it's in there. Uh, it just kind of highlights it behind the scenes for me. Uh, and, uh, and I'll answer it as soon as possible. And of course, a quick thank you to everyone who does answer questions down in the comments. Thank you, everyone. Um, but yeah, today I'm answering a question from Mustafa all about how to like how to turn off and, uh, and open and close valve wheels on a twin set. So Mustafa Metwali says, Hi Mark, could you do a video on how to deal with the valves and manifold on twin cylinders? It's confusing to remember which way to open the valves and it's easy to get wrong, particularly in emergencies. Yeah, unfortunately my twin set is uh, is at the other house because I'm moving house at the moment. So it, things are in different places. That's why stuff's disappearing slowly. Um, I do have a, a demonstration single cylinder, which I'm going to do my best with. Uh, and hopefully I've got some um, some stock footage of my twins um, that, uh, that I can explain with. But yeah, I'm going to do my best to, uh, to explain it as um, uh, visually and verbally as possible. But yeah, all valve wheels, knobs, whatever you want to call it, um, they all open they all open and close in the same direction it's like if you're screwing in a screw into a wall it's always if you turn it like as you're looking at it clockwise it's going to go in and if you turn it anti-clockwise it's going to come out so to close a valve you want to screw it in and to open a valve you want to open it out um, with single cylinders that's quite easy you just open it uh, you do get like right and left-handed valves it's the same thing, it's just facing the different direction and the opening is now in that direction. You close it by screwing it in and you open it by unscrewing it. So it's the same motion, it's just mirrored. And with a twin set, you also have an isolator valve, um, which looks like this, uh, which is an upright valve. Or it's usually facing upright. Um, some divers do it a little bit differently, but most of them point upwards. And this is an isolator to basically separate the two cylinders. So if there is a failure on one cylinder or one first stage, whatever it is, you can isolate the two cylinders. Otherwise, you're draining both cylinders at the same time. So in a real world emergency, if there's something wrong with your right post, you can isolate it, you can breathe from the left hand, and if it's uncontrollable, you can't stop that, uh, that gas from escaping. The right cylinder is the only one that's gonna drain. You can still continue the dive, or at least get back to the surface with your left cylinder. And you can close each individual valve to, uh, to shut off each first um, and second stages. So. It's, it's quite a convenient way. And we have something called a V drill or a valve drill to shut them down, which helps you identify like where a, um, a leak is coming from. Cause it's not always immediately obvious where it's coming from. Um, especially if all the, the this bubbles are just coming from behind your head, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes to uh, determine where it is. So we do a, a V drill, which is just closing down and opening each um, uh, each valve just to try and diagnose where that leak's coming from and usually with with normal use on a um, on a twin set as long as you have first stages put in uh, in both of the um, uh, the valve outlets you just open up all of the um, uh, all of the valves you open that uh, that isolator otherwise you're only going to be breathing from a single cylinder open up both of the uh, the hand wheels you open up the right open up the left and uh, for full disclosure this is a broken valve and um, so it won't stop it will just keep turning turning so um don't worry about that uh open it all the way up uh, until it just stops just finger tight we don't do the quarter or half turn um uh, at the end of it anymore uh, that led to um, some um, some issues so uh, I think I've done a video on that so yeah you just open it all the way until it stops and then just leave it it's, it's open we want it all the way open don't wrench it open as hard as you can uh, just finger tight as soon as it stops you're good 
if you're doing a, um, a V-drill, there, I think there are a couple of ways of doing it and it kind of depends on the uh, either training agency or on the instructor, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and it all depends on whether you open the isolator valve first or almost last. Personally, I like to close the isolator valve first, just because in a real world emergency, you are securing a, uh, an air supply immediately. Um, I've read others teach differently, which is perfectly fine. Um, they're, they're, there are good and bad ways of doing things. These one, this is one of the things where it's like, well, you could diagnose where the leak is coming from and then isolate, um, or you can isolate first. It's kind of up to the diver. But for a, for a V-drill, personally, I like to isolate first and then you're diagnosing. So the post that I usually go to first is the right because the one that you're breathing from, your primary, is usually on the right-hand side. So that's the one that's getting the, the most breathing cycles going through it. So if a first stage is gonna fail, it's more likely to be the right-hand side, unless you bumped into something and rupted a hose or whatever it is. But yeah, it's more likely to be the right-hand side. So in a V-drill, you purge your backup regulator, because you're gonna be breathing from that in a second, and make sure that's working make sure it's easy to um, to access uh, sorry i should always um, sort of say you've you got to tell your buddy or your dive group that you're going to be doing these kind of drills first um, so you have some kind of hand signal whatever it is make sure that they actually are stopping and watching you uh, and not swimming away because you're going to be closing valves you don't want them to be swimming away and then you've shut a valve and then you can't reopen it uh, you your backup doesn't work for whatever reason and they've swum off so you want to make sure that they're nice and close they're watching you and they can help out just in case so tell them first um, purge your backup and then close your right hand valve and tell them that you're closing the right hand valve breathe down that primary second stage as soon as that stops you can put that down swap to your backup secure that second stage so it's not dangling and um, going anywhere because it's usually a, a long hose and then you can tell whether the bubbles have stopped or not. If the leak's continuing, then it's not the right-hand post. So then you can reopen it, swap back, well, purge, and then swap back to your primary, and then do the same for the left-hand side. So you can close the valve and then purge that second stage. You don't always have to um, like breathe it down. Uh, if you purge it, it should be fine. Uh, there is a risk that you can let some water in if you're holding down the purge button, um, but I just tend to face it downwards uh, and then just sort of feather it uh, until you get rid of all of the gas. Hopefully that's finished and, um, and the leak has stopped. Uh, if not, it could be something else. But then, yeah, you open up that um, that valve and um, and then open up that isolator, and hopefully it's fixed. Some issues, if it's like an exponential free flow or something, if you're diving in cold water and your second stage is just free flowing and you can't get it to stop, then sometimes you do just need to close that valve, let it warm up a little bit, and then if you open that valve really slowly, don't whack it open because that can start a free flow anyway. Just slowly open up that valve uh, and then it, um, a lot of the time it does just continue to, um, uh, to work perfectly normally. Uh, if it doesn't, then yeah, that's the end of the dive and you um, sort of open, uh, you head back up to the surface, but you can close that valve and continue to breathe from the other cylinder. It's, um, it's a good way of like diagnosing, oh, okay, this is exactly where the leak's coming from, but securing that, um, uh, that safe cylinder, shall we say, on the other side. So that's one reason why I quite like to like isolate first, just because I'm not wasting any like additional gas. I guess the argument is if you're venting from two cylinders, then the amount of gas lost might be a little bit less. Um, however, I just like to isolate. It's just, there you go, it's, it's fine. Whatever's left in that cylinder, I know exactly what's left in that cylinder. Um, and it should be enough to, uh, to get you back to the surface. Um, as far as which way to turn valves, it's a lot of it's just muscle memory. Um, so if that's my left valve and you reach over your shoulder, you, you know that you're screwing it in. So you're screwing it in that direction to close the valve and screwing it in this direction to open up the valve. Um, 
just practice. Uh, get your twin set, put it on in like dry land and uh, rest it on a bench or something behind you. And then just reach and just practice opening and closing those valves. Um, once you get used to it, um, it's it's quite intuitive and it doesn't matter which way a, a valve is facing, you should be able to uh, to close it quite easily. And um, and that's the reason why we don't do that like half turn method, because it would, people would close, oh, so correction, people would open up their, uh, their cylinder valves and then they do a, a half or quarter turn back. So then when someone else came to it, it would rotate in both directions and there was ambiguity and there were cases where people would go to this valve and it would freely turn they would end up screwing all the way in and then opening it a quarter turn back so your your spg needle would read it would say that you'd have a full cylinder but when you're actually demanding gas it was really restricted um, so now we just open up valves all the way until they stop and that way if someone tries to open it even more or vice versa they'll go oh it doesn't turn in that direction i'll turn it in this direction um, and then it's like very definitive it's either on or it's off it's, it's fully open or it's fully closed there's no like middle ground um, because if a, a valve is fully closed you look at your spg as soon as you do that pre-dive safety check <sighs> The needle drops oh my valve's not open can you open me up um but yeah I, I think there is some ambiguity on like which order to um to open and close valves in a uh, in a valve drill uh, but personally i do like middle right left that's just i think that's how i was trained and it just it works for me um but yeah the first thing is to always make sure that someone's actually watching you um and you're not just doing it by yourself because i have been on scene where a um a diver i forget the outcome to be honest they left on a helicopter uh they were doing uh valve drills and um i first um sort of witnessed them um and they were on on the deck uh, with like cpr being performed on them uh so yeah just because you're doing a drill doesn't mean that it's perfectly safe. Make sure that your buddy or buddies are safe and there and watching you so that if something does go wrong, they can very quickly offer you a, um, a backup so you can breathe from it. Uh, because whenever you're closing valves, it's never a good thing. And especially when they're behind your back, because your shoulders aren't really meant to reach back there, um, you don't want to get like restricted in any way. So you just want your buddy to be right there to, <laughs> okay right let's solve this problem as opposed to trying to do it yourself um but yeah it's it, a lot of it's just practice uh, and building up that kind of muscle memory i know people don't like muscle memory um and, but uh, but yeah opening and closing valves they all turn in the same direction and um yeah it's just facing another way but your left hand will get used to it yeah these are things that you learn on a um uh, on like a, a twin set course like just practice shutting down and opening up those valves uh, during the dive all of them are open because i want to be breathing from both cylinders simultaneously um, and should something go wrong i can isolate it and um, and yeah if there's a, a leak you can turn off one valve and then once you've determined it's not that one you can reopen it start breathing from that and then swap over to the other one shut it down if that solves it then it's uh, it kind of diagnoses uh, if you shut down both, well, don't shut down both but if you shut down one then the other and it's still going uh, it might be something in the middle in the manifold uh, in which case it is just either way you're ending the dive so just get out of the water um, but yeah the the exact order uh, as far as I've read online some do it isolated first some do it isolated second um, I'm not entirely sure why you would want to isolate uh, like second um, if you've got any good reasons, pop them down in the comment section under this, underneath this video. I can only imagine that it's two because you're venting from two cylinders as opposed to just one. So you're less likely to um, uh, to like, drain a, um, uh, the cylinders, but it makes more sense in my mind to just isolate first. I don't know, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, um, as well as any other questions, um, pop them down in the comment section. Uh, remember to use that Ask Mark hashtag in the, uh, in the questions to get it featured. Um, otherwise, don't forget to head over to our website, divernest.com, uh, like, share, subscribe, do all that good social media stuff. Thank you for watching everybody, of course. 
Safe diving. Thank you.